Hey everyone. So I'm making several, I'm batch filming if you can't tell, wearing the same clothing in every video, but I'm just addressing the post that I made on YouTube about video topic requests because I wanted to try to make a video about each one on there because obviously these are things coming up for you and I want to try to address them the best that I can. And as always, I want to mention that I am coaching again, Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays from 12 to 5 p.m. Mountain Time. I'll put a link in the description of this video to my online booking calendar as well as to my website if you want to check out more about my story there. So one of the, the topic requests that came up was natural antidepressants after we've healed. And I think this is a great topic because this actually came up in a coaching call yesterday or the day before and I've thought this myself and and this is a, a thought process I've went through in my own journey what if you get depressed or anxious again after you've already recovered so say you had you know a lot of people have whatever they might have experienced before the drug gets heightened to a thousand times when they come off these drugs or have adverse reactions plus they develop a whole host of new symptoms so it could be neurological psychological um, physical whatever it might be and people can fear or start to wonder what do i do if i do end up depressed at some point in my life maybe fearing postpartum if they want to have a baby or just anything in life that could trigger any type of i guess symptom or mental health problem that would that a, a doctor would prescribe meds for and i've thought about this myself you know what the standard of care is to prescribe antidepressants for depression and anxiety but what do you do if you can't take those drugs and you experience these symptoms and here's how i responded to it so there are supplements out there like 5-htp sami gaba all of these different things that can be precursors or mimickers of serotonergic GABAergic drugs that are more natural but and and that might be an option for people but most people want to kind of avoid after they've recovered from these drugs anything that can be a mimicker of their the hell they experienced on psychiatric drugs and so for me like when i've had episodes of depression and i'll share this I'll share this with you because this would be a very typical scenario where someone would be prescribed psychiatric drugs and a lot of people are in this situation. So my grandpa died in 2006. I was 24. I was absolutely crushed because I'm very, very, very close to my maternal grandparents. Uh, my grandmother's still alive. I visit her one to three times a week. She's almost 96 and her husband died in 2006 at 77 from cancer and I, I knew that he was going to die likely. He had a, a serious form of can cancer that didn't have a good prognosis. And at the time I was living three hours away while he was sick. And so every single weekend I drove home, um, I was in university at the time to visit and to just kind of start the grieving process. But once he passed, I just went into this dark, deep, dark depression. I'd never experienced it before in my life, but it was, it was because of grief and it was very much like a clinical depression. I wasn't really functioning very well. I was very isolated and secluded, felt just sadness all the time, overwhelming sadness. I stopped going to work. I had a part-time job, didn't phone in, didn't check in. They ended up phoning my mother, who was again, three hours away from where I was and said, where's Melissa? She's not showing up to work. What's going on? And my mom had to kind of take care of that for me. I just didn't care. I was just checked out. And at one point I did go to a doctor and explain like my depression and this, how it was not me. You know, I'm such a happy person. I've always been very social and I was very withdrawn and was having trouble functioning and just very isolated. So I remember him saying to me, I, I don't remember the exact conversation because it was like 18 years ago, but he wouldn't prescribe me anything. And he said, I want you to go through the motions of things that you would typically enjoy, even if you you don't feel any joy or any pleasure. And if they're a real struggle to get through, just try to start rebuilding and living your life. Um, and I started doing that and it was very difficult. But I remember specifically one day I was working out because I was like, that was always something I enjoyed. And it was 
I didn't want to do it, but I pushed my way through it. And I remember specifically, I was doing like an aerobic step workout and something just clicked in my brain. And I was like, my grandpa would not want me to live like this. And I had been grieving for about nine months at that point and something just changed. And I started just like doing a lot of self care and I started just re-engaging and it's like my brain caught up and I felt better. And I'm so thankful to this day that that doctor never prescribed medication to me because it was circumstantial. It was a proper response to grief and I needed to process that and go through it and be able to cry because crying releases trauma and chemicals in the body needed to kind of bring our bodies back. And when we suppress that, it's very dangerous, but that's a topic for another video. So I'm so glad he did that. And I've thought about this when thinking about what would I do in the future if I was depressed? Would it be the exact same if it wasn't uh, preceded by grief maybe not but the symptoms were pretty much the same as when I you know fast forward five years later lose my job go into another depression but this time see a different doctor and get prescribed drugs which takes me into this hellish journey for years um, again inappropriately dis um, prescribed but what I would do and I've learned I guess I've been through two sort of depressive episodes in my life handled very differently by my doctors and the first one had a much better outcome than the second one. So the first thing I would look at if I was to get depressed again is, is my life out of balance? Because a lot of times and from everything I've learned about depression and anxiety, usually something is out of balance in your life and not everything is in your control. Like you obviously can't control when someone dies, but just look at every area and this is where doctors really fail but my first doctor didn't so he asked me you know they ask you about your life how is your diet how is your um like do you have a, a good social support system do you have do you like your job what's your what are your finances like do you have a ton of stress in your life um yeah just all different kinds of things depending on what your life circumstance is I would look at where are things out of balance and where can I make changes so a lot of times for me personally I tend to push too hard and my life tips out of balance because I tend to be a workaholic and so I put my own needs last it's made me vulnerable to like narcissistic relationships burnout so I would look there first and and make changes where things are in my control that would be the first thing I would do Another theory of depression is that it results from inflammation. And so this is where the diet comes in. I would look at my diet. Am I eating really crappy food? Could I change things in that aspect? I'm diabetic, so I have a bit of a different circumstance than maybe the average person. But, you know, I'm not I'm not perfect. I don't eat perfectly. But that would be something that I would try to, to change. Like I would be exercising, getting out in the sun, grounding, changing my diet, cutting out junk food and kind of attacking that area. So the inflammation area and the, is my life out of balance area. And I think that that would resolve a lot of the depressive feelings for a lot of people, in my opinion, based on everything I've learned about depression. Another thing I would do is there was a book when I originally self-guided therapied my way out of a pretty severe anxiety disorder. And it was called, the book was called When Panic Attacks by Dr. David Burns. So he is a, a psychiatrist who believes in drug, drug free methods to work through mental health problems as much as possible. Um, and his book was life changing as far as anxiety for me, because it was very detailed and well written, but it also had worksheets like how do I work my way through this these feelings and it had every category of anxiety PTSD OCD um, like phobias general anxiety all of the different categories he also wrote a book called feeling good the new mood therapy I believe is what it's called I haven't personally read it but if I was to be depressed or get depressed that would be another area where I would try to tackle so you know, the, the cognitive side of it. And because I had so much success with his anxiety book and because his feeling book, good book has like really good reviews. And again, he helped me so much in the anxiety aspect. I would read and work through that book. And so I'd be trying to cover all of the areas, the life out of balance, the stressors, the inflammation and the cognitive stuff and doing the reframing in the work. Would it be as easy as taking a pill? No. Would it have better long-term results for a lot of people, especially in this community? Absolutely. So that's what I would do. 
supplements I'm often on the fence about because they they're not well I don't even like to use the word regulated because I mean these psych drugs are quote regulated and look at the disasters they cause um but supplements I just don't to me it's not again getting to the root of the problem could it be an adjunct to the other things I mentioned yes potentially but I would say most people in this community would be pretty leery to take supplements that mimic psychiatric drugs or boost serotonin, GABA, all of those things, and, and they want to avoid that, which I can respect. That would be what I would do as well, unless none of what else I was trying was working. That would, in my mind, be a slightly better option, obviously, than going back on psych drugs, I, which I personally would never do again in my life. Um, so yeah, that's that's the way that I would approach a depressive episode if I had one again. And yeah, maybe I missed something or maybe you have something you could add in the comments for someone that might be helpful. So what would you do if you came upon depression or anxiety again after you had recovered from these drugs? How would you approach it? And what would you do differently? So knowing what you know now, and a lot of times people are put on these drugs for non-mental health reasons. So maybe you've never experienced anxiety and depression until the drugs. And that's that's actually not that uncommon either. Um, but you know what that feels like now from the drug. So if you were to have that again happen, how would you approach it? Or if you went on these drugs for mental health problems, how what would you have done differently if you knew then what you know now so let me know in the comments if i missed anything or if you have anything to add to this conversation and i'll see you next time bye